My Mini 2 got a fully functioning collision avoidance system. Let me show you how. Hi guys, it's Oli here. I hope you are having a great day. In today's video, I'm going to show how I made the collision avoidance system for my Mini 2. For you to understand this video, it's absolutely necessary to watch part 1 in this autopilot series because it builds on that. So these are the components I'm using. This uh, choice of pins with A3 and A4 for the Arduino Nano with the ultrasonic sensor is totally arbitrary. I just decided to have it like this because then it's easy to mount on the top of the drone. So in the schematics you will see that it is based on an Arduino Nano, an AC12 uh, 433 MHz serial radio link or transceiver to use a fancy word and this HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor. I decided to go with the ultrasonic because of its uh, field of view. Maybe I should change or I will change it later to some uh, laser uh, sensors, but we will see. So this is how I connected it to the Arduino Nano. The, the pin choice of A3 and A4 is totally arbitrary. It's just for easier mounting. Any general purpose input output pin works just fine. And the AC12 module is connected to the serial port. It's a serial uh, transceiver. Note the 500 microfarad capacitor connected to the supply and ground pins of the module. This is necessary for more reliable transmission on longer ranges. Why did I choose this uh, way of doing it? I, on my Mini, I try to tap into the, the ESC and the IMU and uh, all these uh, kind of modules inside the drone to trigger a break or a collision avoidance by sending a signal from the ultrasonic sensor. For As of now, it's not clear to me how to solve it that way. So I decided to go this way. The positive with this one is that for this one does not need to open up the drone. So the, the warranty of the drone is not being voided. Anyways, and as you see, the, this whole setup on the top of the drone is getting uh, power from the battery of the drone. Here is the code for this whole assembly on the top of the drone. Pause it if you need it. I will make a video on this sensor later. But what is important here is that I set the measurement unit to half a meter with this uh, sensor and I'm sending 0, 1 or 2 to the drone. So this is where I'm going to put it on the top. I'm using the same methods which I have used before, so I'm not going to comment on that too much. So basically my idea is that when the drone is more than one meter away from any object, this module on the top is going to send a 0 uh, through the radio frequency. When it is between one meter and half a meter, it will send a one. And when it is closer to than half a meter, then it is going to send a two. And this is going to be interpreted by the, by the receiver end, which is basically the same uh, remote control, just with an added radio link to serial port three. And here is the code for the remote. We are using the SPI library because of this is how we communicate with the DACs. I named the two chips, chip 1 and chip 2. Here are the variables I'm using. You can post this and of course it will be published to check uh, what is going on here. In the setup, these are the joystick inputs. I'm starting serial 3 because that's where the AC12 uh, transceiver is connected to and the chips are being set high because they are active low and I'm starting the SPI bus. What I'm doing here is I'm checking the joysticks positions 10 times in a row and I'm averaging them to get a more accurate reading. That's what this whole section is doing. And uh, here is the division by 10. That's what uh, makes the average. And this part is mapping these values which are unique to every joystick 
The joystick's position is ba basically being turned into a value between plus 100 and minus 100. This is how the, the, the drone is being communicated the value to. This next part here is what looks for signal from the ultrasonic sensor. I'm going to explain that a little bit later. And this part is which sets the actual DAC values so that the drone knows what to do. And this happens every 20 milliseconds, so it's basically 50 hertz, which is, uh, is fast enough, enough in my opinion. So let's see what is this set DAC function. It gets two values, two variables in. This uh, tells the actual number and to which channel we are talking about. The value is between 100 and minus 100. As far as the joysticks can be forced physically to, to give a little bit bigger value than 100, I decided to limit them in between plus 100 and minus 100, no matter what. Now, depending on which case we are talking about, 0, 1, 2, or 3, it is being mapped, this plus 100, minus 100, to the proper DAC value. This DAC register is based on the data sheet. I'm going to do an, a video of these 4822 DACs because they're very cool. So I'm not going into that more here. The primary and the secondary byte is containing the 12-bit information for the DAC to know which voltage to give out towards the remote so that the drone knows what to do. And this is where I'm setting this 1-bit to 0 telling this chip 1 that we are using DAC1 in chip 1. Case 1 is very much the same. The mapping has a little bit different values because it represents a different joystick. And this is different value. I'm setting this to 1, telling the, the DAC that we are using DAC2 in chip 1. Same thing here, DAC1 in chip 2. And then in case 3, it's absolutely the same, just this one sets that very bit to 1, telling that it's 1, that it's the DAC2 in chip 2. So I'm turning off the interrupt, sending the two bytes, and then basically disabling the chips and returning the re-switching re on the interrupt. And uh, that's basically how it's being communicated. Now let's see this part. So if the AC12 a transceiver receives an information from the ultrasonic sensor, it count, it um, copies it into the rebound vari variable and starts a counter. Uh, as you remember, when rebound is zero, then basically every object is far enough from the drone to, to do any action, so we don't care for it. But when it's bigger than zero, then this line defines what it should be done. When it's one, then it reverses the joystick exactly the same much how it was and 25% more. So that's the minus 25 there. It is, it is necessary because if I release the joystick just before it starts to see the wall, if this is zero here, then it will not do any reverse action. So the 25 will be the only reverse action. When this value becomes two, meaning it is closer to the, to the, uh, to the wall. Uh, this uh, rebound uh, to the right one is basically checking the second bit. Anyways, then it will add an additional 50, minus 50 to that joystick position. So at least it will go back with 75. That would be minus 75. And any additional joystick, forward joystick, or backward joystick movement is being added to that up to maximum 100. Now, what is this cycle here? Basically, every time it does this correction, the cycle number goes up. What I did here is if by any reason the communication got cut between the ultrasonic sensor and the remote, then theoretically the remote could be remote could be stuck in a backward motion, but this makes it basically uh, not happen because every eight times 20 milliseconds, it is rechecking if there's a signal. If there is no signal, it will just hover. So it is not a possibility that it will fly away. 
that was the code guys but now you could ask how far can this reach because this is an additional radio link this is my test setup the ground unit sends a signal arbitrarily 88 constantly sends this number to the drone it is looking for this specific number and when it sees it it sends 66 back and when the ground unit gets 66 it will blink that led so this uh, eliminates all the the noise so here's the code you can pause it if you want it just does what i said and i went out to test it uh, the video was very bad but here at least you can see that there is the green led blinking so we have a proper connection stable and the drone is around 300 meters away but here is the indoor test the real test of the pudding so i connected this hc12 module on the stm32 which you could see in my earlier video the only change is that i had to abandon the pb10 and 11 uh, pins for the chip select wires i just dedicated two other pins because the hc12 had to be connected exactly on pb10 and pb11 because that's serial port 3 on the stm32 anyway so here now i'm pushing the joystick forward and as you can see the drone backs off from the wall i'm not releasing the forward pressure on the joystick and it comes back anyways now as you remember it is being set to one meter and half a meter as the two thresholds um, by adjusting these thresholds the drone can be even more sensitive as it approaches the the wall now what i try to do here is to show you that even though the drone is in reverse mode all the other joystick movements are still valid so i can turn the drone while it is backing off the only parameter which is being changed is this forward motion towards a backward motion all the rest is exactly what i do on the joysticks and then you of course you could ask what does the drone do if i pull the joystick back when it's at the at the wall is it going to reverse that no the backward motion is just going to add to the backward motion of the already backing away drone so that is that problem is not not existing now also note that when i'm getting close to the threshold limit if i give basically a command to the drone to go forward it will just go backwards so when when you are already close to an object it is not possible to smash the drone into the wall now with the settings i have now if i would back totally off from the wall and give it a full throttle forward i would be able to hit the wall but it's just because i tested it indoors and i wanted to i didn't want it to already react like from two or three meters because this sensor can react from four meters which is which could be enough i think and then of course one more possibility could be to adjust the joystick so that the maximum forward motion is a, is a, is like 60 percent but when it backs off then it can do the 100 percent thus even make it more safe so here i'm on the limit you see and as, as i just try to push forward it basically comes quite quite fast back because it's it's already at the limit and of course like this it also works so that is all about it today's guys uh, there is a lot more to do on this project and of course more sensors can be put on to the sides and to the back that's not a problem at all so if you have anything to say or if you have any questions please leave it in the comment section and check out my other videos if you're interested in this subject and uh, please don't forget to subscribe it really helps out a lot thanks for watching bye guys